Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. When you insert columns and rows into a worksheet, remember these two rules. First, the number of columns or rows you select becomes the number of columns or rows you insert. Second, new columns are inserted to the left of the selected columns and new rows are inserted above the selected rows. Be careful when inserting columns and rows to ensure the insertion doesn't create problems for existing worksheet formulas. Formulas most often adjust their cell references to accommodate the insertion, but more complex cell references may not be adjusted. For example, if you had a formula that was the sum of cells A1 through D1, and you inserted a new column between columns B and C, the formula adjusts itself to become the sum of A1 through E1. However, it always pays to double-check worksheet formulas after inserting columns and rows to ensure everything is working properly and formulas still calculate the correct cell ranges. To insert new columns, select the same number of columns as the number of columns to insert. The newly inserted columns will appear to the left of your selection. Then click the Insert button in the Cells button group on the Home tab of the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, choose the Insert Sheet Columns command to insert the new columns into the worksheet. To insert new rows, select the same number of rows as the number of rows you want to insert. The newly inserted rows will appear above your selection. Then click the Insert button in the Cells button group on the Home tab of the ribbon. From the drop-down menu that appears, select the Insert Sheet Rows command to insert the new rows into the worksheet. To delete columns or rows from your worksheet, select the columns or rows to delete. Then click the Delete button that appears in the Cells button group on the Home tab of the ribbon. In the drop-down menu that appears, select either the Delete Sheet Columns or Delete Sheet Rows command as appropriate. Ensure you don't delete columns or rows needed for the worksheet to function. Also ensure you don't delete just a few cells in a column or row, as that is a very easy way to ruin existing formula cell references in a worksheet. As long as you are deleting entire columns or entire rows, the formulas should adjust their cell references just as they do when you insert new columns and rows. Also, remember that choosing the delete command is not the same thing as pressing the delete key on your keyboard. Pressing the delete key on your keyboard actually corresponds to clicking the clear button in the editing button group on the home tab of the ribbon and then choosing the clear contents command. Doing this only removes content from the selection. It does not actually remove the selection itself from the worksheet. If you choose the Delete command on only a few selected cells, Excel must then fill in the blanks in the worksheet with information from adjacent cells below or to the right of the cells you selected and then deleted. Doing this can easily ruin formula cell referencing in a worksheet. So, be careful and double check your worksheet if you choose to delete only a few selected cells. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.